My name is Julie, and I'm married to Tim. He was in basic training and also in Vietnam while I was still back home in school. Early on, when we were when we were dating before we got married, he had a really strong startle reflex. If he was sleeping and I went to wake him up, um, I had to really be careful because he being startled awake was not a good idea because it was very scary for him and it was scary for me because <clears throat> it was such a strong reaction. But then after we got married, when I would be gone, whether I was going to a workshop or overnight or um, just go getting away for a weekend with the girls or something like that, I noticed that he was very tense about me leaving. And um, when I came back, um, instead of feeling like, oh good, you're back, he seemed angry with me that, that I'd been gone. And so we um, were struggling with figuring out wh what the problem was between us. And so we found a really good um, counselor who did couples therapy. And I just felt like that was a big help. Because I really didn't have any idea that it had to do with Vietnam, um, I thought that he was being overly, um, I don't mean protective, almost controlling of me and my behavior. And so instead of being worried about him, I just sort of got pissed off and said, you know, I'm gonna go. He was at school and the um, room next door was a biology lab and they were dissecting cats and something happened with the smell of the formaldehyde or whatever they were pickled in. It just brought back a, a, a flashback, and a flashback is not like a memory, it's not like a dream, it, you're, you're actually physically where you were. Um, and it, it doesn't matter that your surroundings look normal, it doesn't matter that he knew he was at school. In his brain, so that's the reality, he was actually in Vietnam, probably in the dark, and, you know, in in the middle of the night, in combat. Um, I mean, that's where he really, truly was. And so the school counselor, who was a really good guy and also a former Marine, called me at school and said, you need to come home. I just sent him home because he was having a flashback. And I still didn't quite get it until the day that it happened at home, and we were watching some silly show on Channel 2 about something, and there was a scene where a person was um, in an operating room, and they were laying on the operating table, and he was immediately right back to the night he was wounded, and he was really, he was really truly there. And all I could do was just sit by him and just keep saying, you're safe, I'm here, you're safe, it's okay. Um, you're going to be okay. And he, then eventually he came out of it because you do. But um, that's when then I realized that there was something much more serious than, you know, simple jealousy or anything else going on. He didn't get help because he didn't really know what he needed and I didn't get any because I didn't know what I needed. The first time he went to the VA in 2000, he went and got a case manager. He went to see her a couple of times and she was great and really helpful, but then that, then he didn't go anymore. Um, and then that period, I think between 2000 and 2008, was really, really hard. We were going to the VA, I'm sure he told you the story too, that he, we went there to get a plaque and I said, well, maybe we could go see Kim while you're here and you could get kind of back into the system. And they, she wasn't there and they ushered us immediately. They were awesome. Right in to see an intake nurse in the mental health section. Um, he was really good. They really made sure that he didn't get off the hook. He didn't get out of the system. He didn't get away and not come back. And that was, that was really um, a miracle as far as I'm concerned that you know, because that started the whole ball rolling. And actually, I was able to go in, um, I, think, I think it was once, but it might have been twice, and meet with him and his um, counselor who did the prolonged exposure therapy with him and really talk to her about, you know, about what was going on with me and how that felt at home. And um, sh she was really very, very good. For 
a spouse or a partner or a girlfriend or a, or a husband of a, of a female veteran, just don't expect things to be the same. And just be really, really supportive. And, and if you have to, I would say somewhere between nudging and nagging um, to say, you know, I really, really love you and I know you're struggling and I know you think that maybe it's not very macho to say I need help, but I know you do and I do too. And it, that's probably the best thing to say because you can say maybe you don't want to do this for yourself, but you need to do it for me and you do need to do it for our kids. And just at least go and see what they've got because the VA is great and the veteran centers are great and it doesn't make you weak, it doesn't make you flawed, it just means you're human and so, you know, go get help because they're pretty cool people and they really will help you.